This video has been a long time coming. This is my drag queen owned beauty full face video. Leaving it in. First try. I have collected a lot of makeup over the last few months that I've been talking about doing this video because they're mostly, if not all, like small brands. And so they come out with collections and they'll sell out. And so it's like, I had to wait for things that I felt were practical for my use because I am not going to be putting on like Trixie's makeup today. I mean, I have Trixie's makeup. I'm not going to be doing Trixie makeup. Maybe that'll be another video, but like, I don't have the makeup in my collection. Like I've watched enough of Trixie's videos to know that I don't have what it takes to do justice to that look in my collection. I don't have the super saturated like formulas. So, I have stuff from Trixie, Kim Chi, Miss Fame, and this is actually not a RuPaul's Drag Race drag queen. Alexis is such a renowned drag queen in her own right that she has her own makeup line that's just totally gorgeous. And I actually ran across it on one of the accounts that I followed of the girl who won uh, Glow Up. So worlds collide, but either way, I bought this. This is just called The Shimmer from Sensorium, and it's a lot like the like Fenty Diamond Bomb highlighter and stuff like that. And it's a little bit finer. So either way, here's the thing. I have no idea how this look is gonna go today. I have such a random smattering of different things and I have applied all of them, but never together. <laughs> And I also like don't know how the vibe is gonna end up. So like I might end up like changing clothes or something in order to like bring it together in the end, depending on like where I land. But I've got my clip-ins in. We're going for some coverage on my face today. <laughs> and I asked y'all for, you know, just topics to talk about on my Instagram. So I'll allow that a few minutes to fill in with some good recommendations and then we'll answer those as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hello, hello, hello. I want y'all to know that, you know, I was a semi latecomer to RuPaul's Drag Race. Like I started watching when season five came out, I think season four or season five, but it took me a while to like catch up. And I then have only seen through like season eight and maybe like part of the all-star. So like, I don't know everything that's happened or everyone that's won. I need a hair tie for my hair that grew out of my head and also my purchased hair. The one thing that I don't have is a foundation. I tried kimchi's foundation, but I ended up with something way, like way unusably too light. And so I decluttered that middle of this year. I'm going to instead be using the Chanel, the new Chanel Sublimage Latente. And I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my Vita La Barata Beauty Blur so that I can darken it a little bit. It's a little bit light, but also I kind of wanna get like a more contrasting base between my highlight and my contour or like my, you know, my complexion and my under eyes and stuff, just so we can kind of like set the stage for a snarched vibe. We're not going for snatural, we're going for snarched. I've been really enjoying the Sublimage Latin though. Like it's, it's so beautiful. Ooh, that's actually a great match. This foundation is so lovely. It's like kind of skincare-ish, you know? And it has a really lovely luminosity to it, but it does dry down. It has its own kind of like self-setting property. And it, oh my God, the way that it wears is so freaking pretty. I just made a couple of, you know, conversation sparking videos on my channel. So I'm very interested to see what y'all submit as like discussion topics for today's video. Check that just a second. Is that pretty? Oh my word, that might be my new favorite combo. I'm going to use a little bit of this Multitask Superstar. It's called the Most Concealer from Kim Chi and it is light, but it is super, super, super high coverage. And it's quite pink. It's like a little too pink for me. I just, you know, I ordered it online. <laughs> so <laughs> I just kind of hoped for the best and it's a, it's a touch light, but it is crazy, crazy coverage. And it's pretty, pretty awesome stuff. I almost considered like buying another shade of it just because it is so wildly high coverage. And it's going to allow me to do something kind of sculpted, you know? But like, whoa, that's so bright. I was like going through my collection and I was like, well, I mean, if I have to fill in the blanks of things that I don't have yet, other drag queen owned brands, I can like use House Labs because Lady Gaga is technically a drag queen. I mean, 
it's a controversial topic, but I mean, drag, drag is such an art form. I didn't realize it until I started watching Drag Race because I really do feel like, you know, for all the work that drag queens have done for society, a lot of it went unnoticed until it was in our living rooms, right? And I just didn't know, I didn't know what an art form it was and like what went into it. It's just, it's something that I, I respect so deeply, especially because, and you start to feel this kind of sentimentality if you watch it for a while, because you realize that like, for all of the stuff that a lot of these men have been through, that they get to like find community with one another and their chosen family a lot of times with, you know, doing drag. I mean, even if they have good families and things like that, you know what I mean, supportive families, still, you know, a lot. <laughs> The, the gays have been through it, okay? You know, even for all of that, the fact that drag is founded essentially on lampooning female stereotypes to the point of like taking them to such an extreme that it's, it's a trope, you know what I mean? It's just like taking stereotypes all the way to the extreme and there is just such profound meaning in that. And I feel like they're doing so much for like dismantling the absurdity of the expectations that society puts on women from an appearance standpoint, from a, you know, perfection and body type standpoint, from like, from everything, you know, from an entertainment standpoint even. And for that to be something that kind of like transcends this gender barrier, w when it all kind of came around on me when I was watching the show, I was like, this is so, important. <laughs> I feel like I need to tell everybody about how important drag is, you know? And also, I have this passion that has grown <laughs> over the course of my channel and also over the course of just being a person who cannot pick one vibe. I just can't. It's like something that's been troubling me for many years, especially as minimalism was like so weeping the internet, you know, and everybody was just like, oh, less is more. And like, you know, if you have a fantasy self, like, and you're shopping for your fantasy self, then that's wasted money and that's like bad form or whatever. And I just like had a really hard time swallowing that. I was like, no, like, what if I want to be my fantasy self sometimes? Like I'm that person and so, to be able to like occupy an entire vibe like that's been something that I'm so passionate about is like when I decide how I want to feel that day it's not about it being like pulling a couple of items or like putting my eyeliner on a different way it's like I want to basically go as like cosplay of the person that I want to be it's, it's like party monster you know he's like what do I want to be today maybe I want to be a dinosaur today maybe I want to be like you know whatever a, a, a goblin and it's like what RuPaul says it's like you know we're all born naked and the rest is drag like that's literally what you're doing when you're putting yourself together every day you're putting on your like costume for the world and I love the idea of just accounting for every single detail and thinking of the way I get ready every day as like drag you know even if it's something like lightweight it's still intentional I adore it as someone who treats makeup like art I love drag as an art form I think it is so brilliant and so important honestly it should be taught in art school not necessarily the art of it, but as an art history course. All right, we're a little dark right here by comparison. Hate that, hate that, hate that. All right, I'm gonna contour, contour, because that is the drag of it all, is it not? And we'll take another question because I technically, that's only one product that I've used that's by a drag queen owned brand right now. And I don't have a contour by anyone yet here sitting here. Oh man, okay, what is your overall outlook on this bleak effing world? <laughs> what an awesome question. Let me find my contour. <laughs> Let me find my contour. All right, Gucci Westman is not a drag queen. <laughs> if you leave this video with anything, it should be that Gucci Westman is not a drag queen. <laughs> oh no. This is the uh, Westman Atelier contour and that's what we're gonna be using. So my outlook, I think that it really, this is terrible, it really helps to focus on what you can control, which is so little. It's so little, y'all. Like, start with nothing. Like, in your brain, just wipe it clean. Start with the fact that you probably don't have control over anything, and then take a minute and just laugh about that. Because... That's reality, okay? And what makes us really sad is that we're clinging to 
things that we think are real and then they disappoint us when they're not real. You know, like we're like, this stands for something in my life, this foundational principle of my life or whatever. And when you can kind of like let go of those devices, it's everything from like political affiliation to counting calories, you know, just like things that you think are defining characteristics of you that keep you grounded. And then you realize that like, if you let go of those, the sky doesn't fall, no one's keeping score, and no one really cares. You realize like actually how infinite your possibilities are and how much freedom you really have. It's just in thinking, just in the way that you decide to think and that like, you know, sure, you were raised a certain way and everything like that, but just like everything that's currently in your brain that you think of as immovable, it came from somewhere. <laughs> it hasn't always been there, you know what I mean? And so like, you can change it if you want. And I'm not like trying to spiritually bypass trauma or something like that, like, <laughs> I would love to if I could, but I can't. But it's more about taking certain things and going like, okay, is this really non-negotiable? The way that I feel about this or this like imposition that this has on my life, like the way that this makes me feel, this thing that I don't like, that I feel like I have to do or I have to think about or I have to like live within, like how immovable, how non-negotiable is it really? Because when you start to look at it that way, you're like, oh, I am actually like, I am the one who's the boss. Like I get to decide. And like what it comes down to is like, oh, okay, well, what are the consequences? Come toe to toe with worst case scenario of just like exactly what will happen. It like the worst thing that can happen if you decide to like change your viewpoint of what your responsibilities are or shirk your, you know, people pleasing or whatever. Like usually, I mean, outside of being responsible for a dependent, right? But usually it is disappointing someone. And if your biggest fear is disappointing someone else, then they probably have like too much say in your life. Full stop. Like they probably don't deserve to have that much control over the way that you think. So when you take that apart, when you dismantle that, everything becomes chaos. <laughs> and I take so much comfort in that. I love it because it's like, wait a second, no one knows what they're doing. So stop letting other people make you feel bad because you don't know what you're doing. And it, it's no, no one knows what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. So like, it's actually kind of fun because we're all just like, I IDK, my friend Nassime called it cosmic kindergarten. And I was like, that's so flipping accurate because we're all just like, e -e 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 -e, what dis, boom, who dis, friend, enemy, IDK. You know, like it's all just a means of like, true, just so you think you can live, like that's how it is. But I guess my point is like, YOLO, like literally you only live once. And so you get to decide whether you're gonna like steal those moments for yourself because no one's gonna steal them for you. So yeah, I guess that's kind of like my, my view on the bleak, bleak world is it's like, sure, but at the same time, my responsibility is to take care of me and my sphere first and then use my energy to like continue to uh, spread positivity and do the best that I can basically further and further out. But it starts right here. You can't pour from an empty cup and no one else is going to place you first. You have to place yourself first. If you don't learn to love yourself in real time, you will never actually love yourself. You'll always be loving a past or future version of yourself and not the one right now and you'll reach your deathbed. Okay, I'm all right, I'm gonna start putting on blush. Um, <laughs> this is the Trixie Cosmetics blush in something. It literally doesn't say it on the package. I think that the sticker might have fallen off. Yeah, it had a sticker and now it doesn't. So I will put the color on the screen. But either way, I have these very like strong, I don't wanna say like fears, but like this really strong awareness of mortality, right? Look at that color, it's terrifying and I'm obsessed with it. 
So I'm putting this on inexplicably with a 111 on 1111 at 1145. I think that like when you realize, like I had this moment where I realized, I had talked about it in a video, I was like, I'm never gonna be 14 again. I'm never gonna be 21 again. I'm never gonna be 27 again. I'm never gonna be 35 again after this, you know? And it's like, okay, like do the thing, especially when, you have a kid? Oh my god, I'm not trying to sit here and like gatekeep on these feelings like, oh, you'll only understand if you give birth to a child out of your belly. Like, no, that's definitely not how I feel. <laughs> I think there are many, many ways that we can like reach these like realizations, these epiphanies, these tiny mini nirvanas. But having a kid makes me, like I remember apparently so much more than people in my life remember about being a kid and like just the kaleidoscopic psychedelic experience that being a kid was where you just freaking stare at stuff until like your vision goes all tunnely and you can like see particles in space and stuff like that is fun and I miss that and so like there's parts of me where I'm like I want to make sure that my kid knows to live right now. Like appreciate that weird psychedelic zero consequence life that you have right now. And like, I want to borrow some too. <laughs> I want to like relive that part of my life where it's just like, I don't need drugs to be like, <laughs> everything is wild <laughs> because everything is wild and you just kind of have to marvel at it sometimes, you know, everything is freaking wild. Okay, so there's some blush. I also have this kimchi blush. This is called uh, Pink Rosé and it's the Thaler blush. Thaler blush and it's quite bright. I'm gonna try and put this on with something fluffy, light-handed-ish. Sure, yeah, this is a Beauty Pie brush. And so this is the Thaler blush. It's kind of peach on one side and pink on the other. And I mean, this is going to be an extraordinarily pink look. This is about to be terrible. Hang on, hang on, I wanna do, wanna do a little bit of that, there we go. Yeah, if there's anything that, you know, I, I found when shopping with these things, is that like, if you want color that is even like inside the crossover of the Venn diagram with what you would consider to be like normal makeup that you would wear on an everyday basis that isn't straight up like costume makeup, you're probably just gonna be wearing pink, you know? It, like there's not a lot of like subtle gray toned mauves or anything like that. It's just not what is visible to the check cashing place around the corner. And so, you know, if, you're, if you wanna go for something skin native, the closest you're gonna get is probably pink. So I'm gonna be careful with my pink hair, but not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. I, I think I got rid of my kimchi bronzer because it was just like wildly the wrong color. So I'm going to use the House Labs one. I think that Lady Gaga is going to be my savior today for just makeup that kind of brings it back on the rails so that it doesn't look just entirely like paint. And that's not a dig on drag either. It's like, that's, they call it being, you know, Painted by fame. So a lot of people are asking, who's your favorite RuPaul's Drag Race queen? I, geez, my favorite queen? That's so hard. That's so hard. I mean, honestly, I love Sharon. I think Katya is fantastic. I think that the one that I would like actually vibe with the most though is Trixie. Like every, there's something about watching Trixie where I'm just like, I, get your rhythm of thinking. Every time something like falls out of your mouth, it's like exactly what I was about to say too. And I don't know, he just kind of has this like really relaxed demeanor on camera, but can also just like talk nonstop, but never run out of interesting things to say. He's just really cool. Like it's, it's kind of funny. It's like, whose drag do I like the most? I'm probably the, you know, the most impressed with like Aquaria or something, right? Or, oh, Shangela, who am, what am I talking about? I freaking love Shangela. Now I love Shangela. Shangela on the show was kind of a hot mess. She was kind of busted. Like she admits that. And so it's like Shangela now is just so flawless. I also love Alyssa Edwards. Oh my God. I could, if you limited me to only one person that I could get reaction gifts from for the rest of my life. Goodbye, David Rose. Goodbye, oh, who else? Elmo. Like, goodbye, all these other, like, memes and everything. Alyssa Edwards has a reaction for everything. And 
I'm obsessed. I love her. The talent is off the charts. That's the thing is there are so many seasons. Yeah. Actual drag, I think it would be Shangela, and I also just love Shangela's personality. If you haven't watched We're Here on HBO, ugh, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. It is a transcendent program. It's so, so good. But I think I'd like as a personality, the person that I would get along with best and probably see the most of myself in is Trixie. And that's funny because Amanda is like obsessed with Katya and Katya and Trixie are like besties. I really think that like if Amanda and I had a podcast and we knew each other for as long and had as much time to get to know each other in that context as they have, I think that she and I would be very just like Trixie and Katya and Jason in terms of just the way that we would like goof and gaff on each other and stuff. So um, if you haven't watched them together, they're a scream. They're so funny. They're so quick. They're so smart. Okay. I've only used a couple of products here. So the next thing I want to do is pop some of this on as my highlighter. Actually, I probably want a powder. Probably want a powder, right? And I know, y'all, I know that there are a lot more drag queen owned beauty brands than this, but like, I couldn't find many that I, that I liked what they had and like saw myself actually using it. I still wanted to like have something that wasn't just a joke, you know? And that doesn't mean that the makeup's a joke. It would have just been a joke me putting it on because it like would have been a poor match or something like that. It just wouldn't have been very interesting to watch. So like, for example, um, Willem. Who doesn't love Willem? Thanks, it's Versace. But like Willem's makeup, I was, it just felt like the website had been neglected for a while and like nothing was in stock and what was in stock was just kind of like picked over and I was like, nah, this, this doesn't feel, you know, this doesn't feel super relevant right now. Let's go for the shimmer here. This will just, oh, my good friend Spam Risk, my favorite. I'm gonna go for the shimmer here. This is so gorgeous. And it's very similar to the highlighter from Kimchi that I bought ages ago, but it like recently went viral on TikTok. Shocking, I know. That's the wrong one. Why am I holding that up? It's this one, the Pearl Gone Wild. And it's it's super, super beautiful, but it's got quite like a blue tint to it. And it'll probably work pretty well on my eyes. That's a vibe. That's a vibe. So yeah, this is... um. Probably not meant to be used just as a straight up highlighter, but do I care? Absolutely not, it's just makeup. Okay, the other things, and I did, okay. These I spent money on, <laughs> on Miss Fame's website. And like Miss Fame, love her to death, super, super talented. Her makeup has been pretty hit and miss. And these, I was so excited about. They're so gorgeous, like look at this. But it like dries down matte, it just doesn't work. Like there are these just beautiful highlights, but they they dry down really like matte and they, they pick themselves up pretty badly. And I was just very disappointed by it. I don't know, I really want to get use out of them because they're gorgeous, but I might have to just like use them. See how they dry matte, it, it drives me crazy. Like they, it just kind of goes like when it dries down. All right, I'm going to start by basing my eyes because I want Color, and this is actually the first time that I will be dipping into the eyeshadow palette that I'm going to use primarily today. It is the Bottle Blonde palette from Trixie. I wrote to the team over at Makeup by Mario about my eyeshadow palette because a couple of y'all commented you're like, my eyeshadow's not supposed to be squishy like that. <laughs> like I was watching Hope Mess Tom's video about it and they were like, oh, well this one's just, you know, kind of pressed a little bit softer than the others. And I was like, okay, there's this like mine. I'm just, you know, being dramatic or whatever. And then I watched Amanda and she like shows this close up of it and like she swatches it and it is nothing like mine. It is just a straight up really beautiful celestial glitter. And I was just, I got my Tammy typing fingers out. I was like, something's wrong here. Can I switch this pan out or whatever? And they're like, can you send us a video of it? It's not like they didn't believe me. They were just like, what are you talking about? And I was like, squish, squish. Like, I'll show you. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be like this. It's like a putty. It's no, I don't think it's supposed to be like that. None of the other ones is like that, so. Now, we did use the Under My Skin palette from Miss Fame in two videos ago, and we might still dip into it if uh, Bottle Blonde ends up being a little bit wild because oddly enough even though this is quite the rainbow it's still more tame than bottle blonde but what i love about at least the swatches that i've gotten from this so far 
is just like how saturated these mattes are and like you would honestly expect nothing less from Trixie. He's very, very discerning. Like when you watch him review other brands and do the Trixie makeup with other brands, like he's just very discerning. It's not even about like, is this a good product or a bad product? It's like, does this work for drag? <laughs> you know? And it's like, of course, his palettes are going to be these like freaking wildly saturated pigments. They are. So let's use something kind of flat so that I can get some control. There is a shape of brush that Lisa has just put out that is so good. <sighs> Look at this thing. It is the 209. So it's like, here is the 203. Like it's just kind of a smaller, more compact version of the 203, but like a longer version of the 204. It's like somewhere right between the 203 and the 204 is the 209. Oh, this shape is so good. It's dense, so it's like it has a lot of control, but it's longer, so there's less fallout. I think we gotta start with like lavender. We're gonna go like lavender and sparkles. I think that's that's the ticket here. There are really not that many actual textured shadows in here. There are three shimmers, and the rest are these crazy, crazy saturated mattes. And there's a, like a stark white that I'm gonna have to use because Trixie's very passionate about white shadows also. This is purple shampoo, by the way, that's what that's called. And then I'm gonna go, I got bangs, which is this bright freaking purple. That's gonna be right here. This is so satisfying to pick something up that has such minimal fallout and so much pigment. That is just awesome. I think the brush really helps too though. Okay, uh, let's talk about those Lisa Eldridge shadows real quick. And I know that this is just going to fill my comments as soon as I even touch on it, but everybody's been asking and like, I've been having the same conversation and I'm not annoyed, but I find myself having the same conversation with like five or six different people at a time. So I feel like the main thing that everyone is saying about that release, because it came out today, is just that like she said that it's mix and match, but in order to mix and match, you would either have to buy two palettes at $68 a piece or buy one palette and then buy singles and then she doesn't sell an empty palette. And that's really, really driving some people crazy and I get it. It is giving hourglass vibes. And I think that the main reason that it, it kind of drives me nuts is just that I don't vibe with any of the actual complete six pan color stories. And there are a lot, I think there are five of them. And they're beautiful, but she put together one where she smashed Vega and Muse together and that was the one I want. But I'm not gonna buy two palettes just to accomplish that, you know? mentality that is so beautiful huh and then we have a wig <laughs> and then we have polished which that's so beautiful okay hmm hmm hmm, hmm. I want to like blend those together somehow I wonder if like polished is the ticket yeah a little bit yeah 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 polished is like that shimmery silver and it works well as just a nice little mixing medium to blend that line just like so and then we'll go blow out on the edges here this formula is just like incredibly incredibly satisfying and high quality did you watch trixie motel i haven't yet which is so stupid because I follow Daisy LA and I follow Trixie. And so I like saw it as soon as it happened and I still haven't watched it. And I think it's on Discovery Plus and I have Discovery Plus. Why, why? I guess it's just because there's so many other things. I like forgot, but yeah, I need to, I need to freaking watch that. Take it. Hey, gum it. How to wear a lot, all caps, of blush as a Luke with an EWK and make it look intentional instead of a mistake. Well, first of all, put on your game face because blush can smell fear. I'm just kidding. I think blush is actually one of the kinder <laughs> color cosmetics, but 
I would say that the main thing to keep in mind is layering from the most muddy color, like the most subtle uh, skin native kind of color up to your local color. So if you're gonna use a whole bunch of blush, the way to go is like, for me, having a little bit of yellow in my skin or whatever, it's like I've already got my contour or my, my bronzer on or whatever. I'm looking at basically the difference between, if I were drawing a spectrum in my mind or like looking at it on like a computer screen or something, here's my bronzer and here's the blush color that I'm trying to get to. And like, what do I need to like to do to trace those steps? So it's probably going to be kind of something that's a little bit of like a brown purple. And then it's gonna be something that's a little bit like of a like rosy color. And then I'm gonna be able to go to like whatever the pop is of like a pink or a coral or whatever. And as you're doing it, you kind of work almost in like a target shape. And wherever you place your the focal point, you know, your pop as it were, of like warmth or whatever of like your main color of your blush, that's gonna be the part that's like, you know, that pops forward. So if you do it here, you're going to draw more attention to just kind of like the cherub rosiness of your cheeks. If you put it here, you're kind of drawing more attention to this like meaty area that kind of pulls the cheekbones up. If you put it here, you're gonna probably get more of a like a rounded look, but also I feel like it can work for something really natural. Like I like to wear a ton of blush when I am like not wearing a lot of other complexion products because it, it gives you that like Fjord's look of, you know, actual ready cheeks like you took a lap kind of thing, but in a flattering way. And so I don't think that there's like a, a, a wrong shape or whatever. It's more about like what you're trying to achieve, but it says without it looking like a mistake. I think it just has to do mainly with color theory and just making sure that you're not applying like all your cool tones on top of your warm tones, unless you have made a mistake and you need to like tone it down. This is looking cute, Trixie. Like these just blend beautifully. Like they just lay down so evenly. It's a very satisfying formula. Favorite season of RuPaul's Drag Race and why? Ooh, that's so hard. I love season four and I love season five. I love season seven. Ah, that's so hard. I don't, I honestly, I think season Four. Because season five is cool, but the whole Reloxetane thing was so annoying. I just wanted them all to go away. And I just love Sharon so much. I like Sharon more than I like Alaska, personally. Sharon's just such a sweetie pie. And I don't dislike Alaska. I think that she's hilarious, but like you get enough of Alaska. Like I could watch Sharon all day. Okay, let's see what happens if I dip the same brush into that white and just try and like almost draw myself like a false crease here. Um, we're gonna do it on both sides for the sake of science. It's okay. I think that there's probably a smarter, more dimensional way to do that. I just don't have a lot of practice at it. I want glitter. Polish is actually amazing because it's pretty lavender. And so it does a really, really good job blending. So I think I'm gonna even use polished like further up here. Yeah, but Mauve Mentality is so good. I'm gonna put it kind of here on top of my purple brown. But I'm like working pretty lightly, I feel like. I don't wanna go nuts with it. I still wanna keep my gradient happening. Yeah, and I'm gonna take, honestly, like I can't believe I'm using one brush this entire time, but I'm gonna use Move Mentality again underneath here. Give myself a little bit of softness. This is all quite, quite there, quite harsh. And then I'll take a little bit of Blowout, which is the brown, and go like right close here. Yeah, that's something cool about this brush too is that it comes kind of to a little bit of a more precise point on the end. BK, this one's a freaking banger. This is a masterpiece. And then I, I need purple down there. So I'm gonna go purple shampoo and a little bit of I Got Bangs. There we go. 
This is a vibe. This is a vibe for certain. All right, and I said that I was going to use polished, which is that beautiful lavender, kind of more up here. I'm gonna start with peroxide, which is that white, and just go all the way like this. Yeah, ooh, and then we can use the pink. That's a great idea, Khaki. Thank you, Khaki. So I'm gonna take the Me Day. I'm gonna use that like here. And just really be the most, you know? We're going like full Barbie, which is like Trixie Mattel. That's the whole point. I'm gonna show up at my mother-in-law's to pick my kid up like this, like, hey, <laughs> the normal day of the office. Yeah, this is such a fun formula because you can just, you can just kind of like zone out and it works just like paint. It doesn't complain at all. What a good, good matte formula, my goodness. For what it is, like I'm not sure that I would always want a matte to behave like this because I don't always do my makeup really sculpturally. I mean, I watched Trixie get just absolutely gagged over a Natasha Denona formula. Like he went to Sephora and he was like, you know, I'm just trying all this high end makeup to do my, my makeup with and a lot of it didn't impress him. And then like <laughs> he pulled out a Natasha Denona palette and he was like, this is the best formula I've ever used. Oh my God. And you really, you feel it in this and it's it works for doing this kind of makeup, you know? It doesn't really work for like the kind of like fluffy blurred thing that I tend to do most days. It's not perfectly even here. God, it's like a highlighter though. Ooh, 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 okay. And then we also have Miss Kim right here. And that I can use right there to soften it. This is so Barbie. It, like, I don't know if they still do this, but like Barbie's makeup when I was playing with Barbie's was always in these like color stripes. It's like purple, pink, lighter pink, white, sparkle. And that's, that's what we're achieving here today. It's giving Barbie. All right. And then, yeah, we touch that white again. This is so Barbie and I'm way into it. And then I'll use the white in here a little, but I'm gonna probably put a little bit of polished on top of that. I really dig this polished shade. It's just this perfect bright silvery lavender. I love it. I love it. And like, there's so many other things to work with in here. There's like this wild green, like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm gonna give this a spray so that it stays. You know, I wanna wear it all day, right? Okay, I'm gonna do eyeliner and brows and mascara. And then we're gonna come back and do some lips. And I don't know, some other stuff too. mascara and the eyeliner and everything on it's like it's such a mood I'm still trying to figure out how I can fit more stuff on my face though because I feel like the eyes are so 
good, but I have other things that I really wanted to use and like that bottle blonde, it really just like stole the show. Did wanna to maybe touch into the kimchi. Let's use a little sponge tip here and get some blue. It's a little bit of blue. And just, you know, accent the sparkle of it all. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. But also like, this is gonna be something that makes its way into my routine a lot, you know? There we go. It's like this unbelievable wet shine. So, I don't know. I just kinda wanna tippy tap that on some stuff. Go, you know, a little bit Hannah. A little bit Hannah with it. Oh, that blue though. That kimchi blue, I want more. I want more. Let's see if I can get that to go on with a brush. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There we go. It's just, it like glows electric blue and I'm obsessed with it. I'm gonna throw on a little bit of cleaner brown gel. Get the definition back. And I want like white right there. I'm gonna take my LH Cosmetics. Oh my, she needs a sharpen. Just do some pure white for the optical illusion. Yeah. All right, let's look at lip products here. So I have a few from Trixie, but I think that this is the one that I wanna to use today. And I am obsessed with the name of it because it's called Mellow Drama. I've come this close to getting those words tattooed on my body. It's another reason I feel very kindred with Trixie. It's just like, I wonder if he knows that this is a Ram Das quote. <laughs> like, I wonder if that's why he did it or if it's just like a fun play on words. But like Ram Das always says, it's like when you can take a step back and like laugh at life, you turn melodrama into a melodrama and you just kind of get to be like a cool spectator sitting in your like seat of self. It's some spiritual stuff from Polishing the Mirror. I highly recommend it. But yeah, I was like, that's the best name ever. So, all right. I think that I do need to infuse a little bit of khaki into this, and you know what that means. It's time for some khaki lip liner. Hit me up, Trixie. I will buy you a khaki lip liner. Not that this is necessarily your shade, because Trixie loves a, a bright lip, but it would be the least I could do, honestly. All right. Melodrama, here we go. It smells so good. It smells like vanilla. I mean... We did something. It's a persona, is it not? I'm gonna throw on some more blush. <laughs> I can't with his lip, it's so funny. There's nothing mellow about that drama. Oh yes, we're just gonna go full Barbie. Presenting in her debut performance, lip syncing Dancing Queen by ABBA. Everybody give a warm round of applause to Virgin, Pal Virgin Paloma. That's a good one. I would love, I would love. Oh my God, maybe I'm Virgin Paloma. We were just talking about that. I need it, okay. So when I was visiting Ingrid's candle studio, someone basically posited the question, like if you know you threw a Halloween party where you only dressed up as your favorite cocktail, and I like couldn't think of a really good one, Virgin Paloma would be so funny. Yeah, so I thoroughly enjoy this. Like, you know what I mean? I love, like I said, occupying a vibe. I'm trying to think, hold on. <sighs> There we go. Presenting to the stage. <laughs> I think I'm Virgin Paloma. I think that's my drag name. So yeah, y'all, I hope that this delivered on my promise of being an entire vibe today. And I just wanna thank all of these drag queens for making this beautiful makeup that enabled me to get this creative on my eyeballs and on my face today, but also 
just for carrying the torch for the beautiful, incredible art form that is drag and bringing that joy into all of our lives because truth be told, for a positive or even uh, livable outlook on the bleak, bleak world that we live in, I don't know where I would be without drag queens, so. Thank you. Thank you to all of them. And uh, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. I've chosen another video here that I think that you'll enjoy. Maybe not quite as much as this one, but you know, crossing my fingers. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you're not subscribed already, you should probably subscribe. That would make perfect sense. Turn on the notifications also because I don't know, then you know. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this and I'd love you to see you in the next one. Bye.